Hey family, please turn your mobile devices to landscape mode for the best viewing experience. And welcome to another episode of Hidden Heritage, where we follow the breadcrumbs to discover more evidence of who were the real American Indians that inhabited the Americas and that are still here till this day. Now, before we dive into the rabbit hole of truth, if you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe, and comment your thoughts down below. If you are already subscribed, welcome back to the channels, and thank you once again for your unwavering support. Please continue to like, comment, and share so more people can witness the truth. Let's dive in. All right, so we are going to, first of all, shout out, shout out to you guys for watching and listening. I really appreciate that. Um, and uh, I got this from, uh, shout out to Henry with an I, Henry with an I, Yamasi uh, Indian. All right. Copper tone, brown skin, Indian. Um, if you're watching, thank you. Right. So we're going to just, so y'all know what I'm looking at. Smithsonian Institution Bureau of American Ethnology Bulletin 73. Early history of the Creek Indians and their neighbors by this guy in July 29, 1922. Washington Government Printed Office 1922. So we're going to, I'm going to jump right into where, right into it. All right. So. It says in that in this um, that document, it says the Spanish. Spoiler alert! I already highlighted it, but we're gonna read the whole thing. Please, uh, so bear with me. Let's go. The Spaniards have visited several regions of that vast country. Okay, they are called Arambe, Guacao, Guacaui, Cojate, Tanzaca, and Pahor. The color of the inhabitants is dark brown. None of them have any system of writing, but they preserve traditions in great antiquity in rhymes and chants. Okay, so who does that sound like, right? Let's keep going. Dancing and physical exercises are held in honor and they are passionately fond of ball games in which they exhibit the greatest skill. The women know how to spin and sew, although they are partially clothed with skins of wild beasts, they use cotton, okay? such as the Melanese called Bambasio, and they make nets of the fiber of certain tough grasses. So like basket, uh, make baskets as well, just as hemp and flax are used for the same purposes in Europe. All right, so I'm going to come here to the Bureau of American Ethnology, this section, right? I'm just trying to find out who were the people, who were the um, inhabitants there, right? What they look like. So when I crop something out, is because all the other stuff before and after is like irrelevant to what I'm trying to look for. Uh, I'm just trying to look for what, um, what they look like. So let's read, right? Bureau of American Ethnology. And uh, by the industry of hazard of Dr. Henry Woodward and strict peace and amity made between those said nations and our people in or province of Carolina. So we're talking about um, USA. OK, we could wish there were more information, but this is sufficient to show that the early English colonists called the Casita by a name corresponded very closely to that used by DeSoto's companions. They gave the tribe 
so-called prominent position which it had in his day and which afterwards uh, occupied and distinguished it clearly from the Westo, who I believe to be the Yuchi, to have been Yuchi. We have therefore a valid reason for concluding that the Kofita, Ketki, and Kasita were one and the same people. This, that this was not only body of Kasita Indians in the Creek country seems to be shown by the name of the town Casiste, which the Spaniards in De Soto's time passed through somewhere near the Talapusa. On Saturday, May 1st, 1540, after having lost his way and spent some time uh, days floundering about the waste of southeastern Georgia, so we're in USA again, continued, De Soto with the advance guard of his army came to the river on the other side of which Kofitakheti Ki was met by a chieftainess, a woman of that place or her niece, or by her niece, for authorities differ, and was received into her own town in peace. May 3rd, the rest of the army came up and they were given half of the town, which is stupid. And the 12th or 13th, they left. They found here a temple or asuari, which the Spaniards call mosque or oratory, and which they opened, which they shouldn't have been doing that, but you know, they uh, finding their bodies covered with pearls. And you know, our the folks always wearing pearls and the number of objects of European manufacture from which they inferred that they were near the place of which uh, uh, Ailan um, and his companions had come to grief. Elva says, right, that's where we get into. Elva says of the people of the province that inhabitants are brown of skin, well formed and proportion. They are more civilized than any people seen in all of the territories in Florida, wearing clothes and shoes. This country, according to what the Indians stated, had, it, had been very populous, but it had been decimated shortly before, the, before by the pestilence. So I'm kind of curious to see what this pestilence is. So we got to go to five. So five doesn't give you an answer. So I think we got to go to page 66 and 67. Okay, so we come to page 66. I'm going to read like the small per portion of it. The V is a U. So it's upon this approach to the... So we're talking about the pestilence. So the pestilence are basically the Europeans coming there and destroying everything. But we're going to read a little bit so you can get like the full picture. Upon this approach to the land, few were the natives who upon um, Ye Strand made fires and came towards us, whooping in their own tone and manner, making signs also where we should best land. And when we came ashore, they stroked us on our shoulders with their hands, saying, Boni can raro angles knowing us to be English by our colors as we were supposed. So the, the Indians knew who these uh, people were. We then gave them brass rings and tobacco at which they seemed well pleased and into the boats after half and horn spent with the Indians. We betook our, whatever that word means, salus. they liked our company so well that they would have come on board with us. We found a pretty handshake channel about three fathoms and a half from Yi Hao. Yi place we landed to the ship through which the next day we brought the ship to anchor, faring a contrary wind to get in some fresh water. A day or two after the governor whom we took into the Bermuda with several others several others went ashore to view the land here some three leagues distant from the ship carrying along with us one of the 
eldest Indians who's accosted and the other day and we drew some in the shore. A good number of Indians appeared clad and their skins having with them their bows and arrow. But our Indian calling out Apada, they withdrew, you know, and lodged their bows and returning ran up the middle in the mire and water to carry us to shore. So the, the chief told them not to attack them. Great. Carry us to shore. At least that's what I'm under, uh, overstanding. Shore where we came there. Um, us stroking complain and the country brought their skins. Some raw, some dressed to trade. And with us, we gave them knives, bears, beads and tobacco. And glad they were of the market. By the by, the women clad in the moss robes, roads, bringing their pots to boil a kind of thickening which they pound and make food and they order it dried makes a pretty sort of bread they brought also a hickory nuts and wall nut in shape it tastes indifferent thickening and shell is small so I'm, I'm reading to the part where they say that they their Europeans burned everything so so let's see I guess I can come down here I think it said these Indians underst oh, overstanding our business. So they are the Indians knew uh, to St. Hella, right? It said the Indians told us the people from the West, from the West, rain, a range and sort of people reputed to be the man eaters had ruinated the place and killed all of those Indians. Okay, destroyed and burned the habitations, and that they had come as far as Kayawa doing the like there. Uh, Ye yeah, yeah, Kasika, of which place was when within one days of sleep or within uh, 24 hours of reckoning of that rate, which with most of the people whom in two days come aboard with us. So that's the that's the pestilence. From page 66 to see. Uh, um, I don't see anything else. Or about any. So let's see. Maybe Anchor. Indian. So it's, it's a. It's a heavy read. But that's all I can gather. From this you guys can parse to see. And parse to read. But that's what it was. That's the pestilence I could find on page 66 and 67 that the Europeans came, man eaters, and burned all that crap and killed all the Indians. Okay? And I, let's go back up to remember where it says they were dark, they were dark brown or brown. So let's see if we can find that again. If you're still here, um, please uh, like, share, and subscribe. Or comment your thoughts down below. All right, let's see what else we got. Again, so that's what it was talking about. It says the inhabitants are brown of skin, well formed and pro proportioned. They are more civilized than any people seen in all the territories of Florida. Wearing clothes and shoes, this country, according to what the Indian stated, had been very populous. But it had been decimated shortly before the before by the pestilence. And you see where the Europeans came, they helped the the chief told them to help them uh, bring them to shore and stuff like that. So it happens. Can't change the past, can only try to affect change in the future. <sighs> oh my, it's a lot of stuff. All right, so this should be like the one of, one of many nails in the coffins. How we did not come from Africa. Many nails in the coffin, right? Because how are you going to bring people from another continent? It's impossible to make that voyage. No talking about physical therapy, uh, recovery. You know, of the muscle atrophy, the sickness, uh, you know, the, the boat ride. 
as they described it, right? So here's what I'm thinking. And here's what you're going to hear and see. The Indians, I'm going to start reading. Let me get my pointer out. I'm going to get my pointer out and I'm excited because I don't even know if I should say it as a spoiler alert or just wait for it and stuff like that. But I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys wait for it. What you're going to read, right? This alone is a, a nail in a coffin that they didn't bring nobody from Africa to to cultivate land that they, the Europeans themselves don't know anything about. And it says it in this document, right? Listen, the Indians cultivate the earth diligently and the men know how to make kind of hoe from fish bones, which they fit to wooden handles and with the prepare the land well enough uh, as the soil is light. Okay. Africans wouldn't know how to do that. The Europeans didn't know how to do that. Okay. So how are you going to get people from Africa to, uh, to the Americas? When the ground is sufficiently broken up and level, the women come with beans and millet or maize, corn. Some go first with a stick and make holes in which the others place the beans or grains to maize. Right? After planting, they leave the fields alone as the winter in that country situated between the west and the north is pretty cold for about three months. Again, Africans wouldn't know that coming off a boat. The Europeans wouldn't know that coming off a boat. Only the Indians already showed you what the Indians look like. Okay, dark brown. Okay. Situated between the west and the north is pretty cold for about three months. Between Being from the 24th of December... To the 15th of March, and during that time, as they go na naked, they s sheltered themselves in the woods. All right, so we go chill, we hibernate, because people always like to be like, "Oh, so what did they wear in the in the winter time?" And I did two whole videos about that. Anyway, moving on. When the winter is over, they return to their homes to wait for their crop to ripen. Again, Africans wouldn't even know, how to, know to do that. Coming up with no slave boat, so. They were already there in the Americas. After gathering in their harvest, they stored a whole of it for the year's use, not employing any part of it in trade, unless perhaps some barter is made for some little household article. So we're going to continue to read. Watch this. So... It's, it's the, that, that, that surprise I got for you ain't in here yet, but you got to you gotta listen. As with the more northern tribes, small outhouse houses were built near the fields. It, yeah, we, again, we didn't live in teepees. We were builders, okay? And watches, watchers posted in cats to drive the crows away. Ribault mentioned among things planted by the Floridians, okay? So we know where we're at. I told you what they look like, dark brown. All right, they were good with basketball uh, ball playing. They want to say ball playing, but we all know it's basketball, running, exercising, uh, stuff like that. Listen, Ribault mentions among the things planted by the Floridians, beans, gods, uh, if excuse me if I'm saying that incorrectly, citrons, cucumbers, peas, and many other fruits and roots unknown to us y'all hear that right so the europeans don't they didn't know about n none of this stuff many of the stuff okay many other fruits and roots unknown to us many okay so how are you gonna bring a bunch of africans to go cultivate the land and, and create agriculture for the land okay all right, but it's still we're still not even to the good part. Once y'all see this, y'all gonna be like, "Oh shit, yeah, it's it's a wrap." For citrons and cucumbers, we should probably understand pumpkins and squashes. So they don't even know some of this stuff, most of this stuff. But yet they bring Africans from Africa to to, to cultivate the land and all this crap. Later, Spanish writers tell us, however that the Indians of the freshwater district lived only in fish and roots. The same was true of all the Indians on the coast of the South Ward. In later times, a change may have been taking place. And I'm, 
once you read it, you, once you hear what they made, you're going to be like, oh, that's us. That's Indians, right? We're not black. We're not African-American. We're not Negro. We're not uh, slaves or descendants of slaves. All right. Um, in later times, change may have taken place for Dickinson encountered cultivated fields north of Cape Canaveral in, in which pumpkins were grown. Their, this, hey, wait, their food, we're coming, was broiled on the coals, roasted and boiled barbecue, right? There is... I'm gonna pull it. I'll, I'll let. You, I'll let you. If you, <laughs> there is every reason to believe that corn was cooked in all the numerous ways known to other Southern Indians. Southern, down south, Lemoyne enumerates grains of maize roasted corn or cr ground into flour, or whole ears of it, among the things which. The natives brought to Latonier's people and at one time they were presented with little cakes. Cornbread. Cornbread. We're the only people that be making that stuff. Okay, and I already told y'all in the beginning what they look like. Dark brown, ball players, exercise. Right? <sighs> oh my gosh. When I saw that, I was like, yo, what the heck? All right. Latimer mentions among the articles of food carried along by the Indians when they were away from uh, home, victuals of bread, of honey, and a meal made of maize parched in the fire, which they keep without being marred a long while. I don't really know what that means. If you guys know what that me really means, um, let me know in the comments below. I just, when I saw that cornbread, I was like, yo, <laughs> checkmate. Let me see what else they got. Yeah, sorry, sorry for yelling earlier when I said cornbread. Um, they carry also sometimes fish with they carry what they cause to be dressed in the smoke, right? And then they tell you how to, I think this is how you, how you make the cornbread. The method of using it, corn, is first to rub it and resolve it in flour. Afterwards, they dissolve it in water and make of it their porridge, migan, which resembles the rice used in the country. It must be eaten as soon as it is made because it spoils quickly and cannot be kept at all. So I think that's cornbread. Please let me know in the comments if I'm on the right track. All right. Spork gives a following native account of the use of tobacco, the Floridians, all right? Floridians, when they uh, trawl, uh, travel, okay, that's a V. The Floridians, when they travel, have a kind of herb dried, who with a cane and earthen cup in the end, uh, with fire and dried up herbs put together Though soft, thorough, and cane is smoke thereof, with smoke satisfied their hunger, and therewith they lay for four or five days without meat or drink, and this all the Frenchmen use for this purpose. Yet they do hold opinion with thou that it causes water and flame to void their form their stomachs. So I don't really know what that means, really. Anybody know? Let us know. Comments below. While we do not find it stated specifically that the Tumukwa cultivated to tobacco, the fact may properly be assumed. The granary, the granary, or is a storehouse that they use to store grain. I had to look that up. I had to Google what granaries mean in granary. Had mentioned, but various accounts leave us in the dark to whether all of the granaries used to store grain were public or whether there were private granaries as well but i already did uh i think one or two videos about the tobacco uh our, our cigar tobacco and uh tobacco indians so back cigar indians and tobacco indians so yeah we we the indians in america have cultivate tobacco as well let me see what else we got so 
And this is another reason why they did not come off of the slave boat from Africa, right? Because they had canoes. Because I was looking for something else. Like, uh, but anyway, it says, uh, do I need to read this one? All right, yeah, I'm going to talk about the fruits. Again, they wouldn't bring people from Africa to grow anything because they wouldn't know. And then the pe different people from Africa, they don't speak the same language, right? So how are you going to bring a bunch of people from Africa to America? They don't speak the language. They don't know the layout. They don't know the soil. The Europeans, as you guys heard, that they don't know many of the fruits and vegetables or the grain, you know? There are a... So I'm going to continue to read, which he tells of the way of which a native wild f fruits were stored. Okay, sorry, in the granaries. There are in that region a great many islands producing abundance of various kinds of fruits, which they gather twice a year and carry home in canoes. So the people in mainline Turtle Island uh, took canoes to the islands, vice versa. So, again, it wasn't coming off of no slave boat from Africa, right? They were made prisoners, Indian prisoners of wars, of war, right here in the Americas. And then they were stripped of their identity of the land and renamed Negro, Black, African American slave. So, claim your heritage, man, for real. <sighs> But we're going to stop right there, at least for this this passage right here. Now, I, I guess I'll show you something else as well. But cornbread, corn, many fruits, uh, fruits, roots, grains that they didn't even know in, anything about. That was indigenous to America. Okay. Okay, we're going to come here. I know you see, I'm going to show you the sun and moon, right? I'm going to show you what that means later on, but I wanted to keep this because I, I just keep finding receipts. Anyway, the valor and skill of Temukua warriors right here. Temukua warriors or Indians is also well attested by the chronicles of the exp expedition of De Soto. Here we go, De Soto again with some Indians. The history of colonial North America, the conquest of Florida under Fernando De Soto. Again, Theodore Irvin Fernando De Soto is his full name. So you can see conquest of Florida. We're going to read the highlighted area real quick. About noon on the third day, they were aroused from their repose by their parents of the Enemies, seven canoes. Again, they didn't come on no slave boat from Africa. They already had canoes. There's several books about it. If you need it, I can send it to you. Let's ask, uh, ask us in the comments. We'll send it to you. Seven canoes issued from among reeds and rushes approaching within hail a gigantic Indian black as an Ethiopian. Somebody uh, mentioned this in the comments. Um, I think it was some guy named Deed deeds deed deed or something or a woman that they always say the complexion like an african right black like an ethiopian but they never say oh these are also africans okay keep that in mind so thank you for that um who, who mentioned that in the comments uh, yesterday or last night can't really remember which is which and again the words of this black warrior being explained for their were partially understood by Indian domestics to prove to be insulted epithets and stretch of hostility. Let's go back to the document. All right, so we're gonna come back to that sun and moon stuff. And then, so again, just to knock down, lock down who the Tamukua warriors and who was the Soto and who is he talking about? What did they look like? What is said about their method of training, treating captives shows at once that slavery was not institutional among them. So we didn't sell each other right okay in the fight with a lot of mirrors a lot of near's men he had with utina the indians displayed great skill discharging their arrows by squads and throwing themselves on the ground when the frenchmen aimed at them that means throwing themselves on the ground meaning they ducked they ducked 
that fighting with bows and arrows was an art in itself is shown by the description of Fidalgo of El Vas. The Indian are exceedingly ready with their weapons and so warlike and nimble that they have no fear of footmen. For if these charge them, they flee. If their Frenchmen charge them, they run. But then as soon as they turn their backs, they are presently upon them. They avoid nothing more easily than the flight of an arrow. Like they're very, you know, nimble. Like you cannot hit them with the arrow. They remain they never remain quiet, but are continually running, traversing from one place to place so that neither crossbow nor our guess boost can be aimed at them. I don't know what that means. I got, sorry, I didn't look it up. I didn't have time. Sorry. Before the Christian can make a single shot, Christian mean the European, okay? can make a single shot with either an Indian will discharge three or four arrows and he seldom misses uh, of his object. Yeah, so he very rarely miss. <laughs> All right, where the arrows meets with no armor, it pierces as deeply as a shaft from a crossbow. So if the Indian don't hit uh, the armor, he, he could hit some flesh and they, they're done. But I want to come here and read some more so you guys can see who they're talking about again and who do they sound like they're mentioning. So we're going to read two accounts from two people regarding the games of Ladinier and then another guy right underneath. This guy, Anne Lemoyne. They're going to say the same thing about these Indians. And let me know who do you think that they are in the Americas today. They exercise their young men to run well, okay, sprinters, and they make a game among themselves, which he winneth that hath the longest breath, okay? They also, um, so we are long distance runners as well. They also exercise themselves much in shooting. They play at the ball in this manner, okay? Basketball. Okay, they set up a tree. So it wasn't no James Nyasmith that invented no little basketball. They just stole the concept and then remade it and then call it their own. But we've been doing it way before uh, that that uh, the thievery of a uh, actual basketball. So they set up a tree in the midst of a place with eight or nine fathoms high. In the top whereof they is set a square mat uh, made of reeds or bulrushes, which whosoever hit hit the plane uh, threat winneth the game, a theret. And then we got this guy that says they're on the same thing. Their young are trained in running, and uh, so the kids, their youth. Um, and the prize is offered for him who can run the longest without stop stopping. And they frequently practice with the bow. They also play a game of ball as follows. In the middle of an open space is set up a tree, some eight or nine fathoms high, with a square frame woven of twigs on the top. This is to be hit with the ball, and he who strikes it first get the prize. And then they try to, this is where the sun and moon come in right here. All right. So according to our French informants, the sun and moon were the principal objects of adoration among these Indians, particularly the former, the sun. This probably means that their beliefs were substantially like those of the Creeks and Chickasaw, a side light of their, they're trying to say cult, is the spirituality. It's furnished in the following account of the ceremony. Let me see what else they got. So right here, I'm going to read where he highlighted the sun and moon. Again, right here, I'm going to, their religious chiefly consists of, consists in the adoration of the sun and moon. At the appearance of the new moon, I have observed them with open extended arms, then folded with inclined bodies to make their adoration much ardency and passion. 
All right, so it's going to bring us to the end of our episode today. Um, I'm going to see if I can find some more. I saw like a couple things about the hair uh, locks. I don't know if I talk about that. I'm so, uh, I don't know. Um, but they talked about locks. Like even them, they didn't, um, they didn't call it dreadlocks. They call it locks, you know? So it's only one group of people in America that be rocking the locks. All right. Or only one group of people in the Americas uh, worldwide, when you say dreadlocks, you're thinking about people in the Americas. All right. So, and then you saw in the earlier where they had certain crops, certain fruits and vegetables that only the Indians knew about, you know? So, <sighs> yeah, receipts. But if you made it this far into the video, Thank you. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Um, turn on post no notifications so you'll be informed of our next upcoming video. Uh, please take care of yourself. Please take care of each other. I'll see you on the next one. Uh, let me know feedback if you want me to try to find some receipts within this document as well. If you like want a part two, I'll try to hunt down some more stuff. But most of the stuff is about this stuff, they're just rambling. Uh, you know, so you'd be like, what? Like, bro, that had nothing to do with who they are or what they look like. That's all I want to know. <laughs> anyway, I'll see y'all later. Peace out.